डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो वेलकम टू द वीडियो सेशंस ऑफ इंग्लिश थर्ड ईयर बी एन जी एम थ्री जीरो एट टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक फ्रॉम द पेपर ऑफ द स्टडी ऑफ एस ए वेर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस यूनिट नंबर सेवन दैट इज अबाउट आर्ट बाई जॉन गार्सवर्दी सो लेट स्टार्ट अवर सेशन राइट नाउ you can see that here we are going to discuss engm 308 and art by john galswadi unit number 7 look first of all we are supposed to understand uh, what are the general informations regarding john galswadi as an essayist as a short story writer as a man of literature as a very popular famous personality of history of english literature so very first thing that comes in front of you that is his pen name he was john st john that is his real name and we are going to discuss now a biographical study his own study as galsworthy as a man of english literature famous for his short stories essays in english literature as you know galsworthy is very much famous for his essays and there is a very famous short story if you have come across that short story it was about the quality it is regarding the shoes of a cobbler and how he had been uh, creating the shoes and there was a very popular short story which is even found in the uh, books and textbooks of school uh, and uh, colleges even his period of time is mentioned over here look it is from 1867 to 1933 so basically it shows that he is the man of victorian era victorian literature he could be considered the person of the victorian literature he is an edwardian writer of initial time and his ideals are of victorian england he won the nobel prize for the foresight saga in 1932 that was the novel and there were three serial novels on this particular title the foresight saga under which he had got the great nobel prize his first play was the silver box and his first novel was jocelyn these were the two works which were of the first category his first works that you must have to remember while writing about galsworthy john galsworthy as an author or the details when you are writing about his biographical information all these things come under his specific uh, informations as an author now we are going to discuss some of his works because our main focus is on his essay on art and censorship that we are going to study thoroughly that is the core part of your topic unit number 7 but before that you must know what were his other works also as for example the foresight saga a series of three novels the novels are regarding the upper middle class society the domestic lifestyle of the upper middle class society and the people of the upper middle class how they lead the life and how they live the life what is their genuine day to day duties and what is that social conflict or the social indictment they had to face in their day to day lives that is the actual stuff of victorian literature if you had come across the victorian literature you know that in the books of virginia woolf or in the books of jane austen or in any other victorian writers you would come across the domestic lifestyle of the people of england and the same thing is also reciprocally found in the uh, work of john galsworthy also he had written he had tried to generalize the social indictment in a very naturalistic way look the a differentiation the significant of his writing as he had got the nobel prize that is about the naturalistic way of presenting the work of art he was influenced by g b show george bernard show the great dramatist the name of the victorian era one who has written man and superman one who had written the pygmalion the man g b show who had been very much famous for his essay on uh, capitalism also he had written one essay 
that was also very popular and the same things same ideology his concepts his style his way of writing all these was very much influential in the case of john galsworthy and he was very much influenced by george bernard shaw he himself was the influence of Harold Pinter as Galsworthy had been influenced by G. B. Shaw in the same way he also was the icon, the ideal writer for other upcoming writers. One of them was Harold Pinter who had been very much famous for his style of writing the dramas with a Mines style. That is one popular drama if you had come across that drama you should go through it. It is the birthday party which was written by Harold Pinter and he himself was very much uh, under the impression of John Galsworthy because Galsworthy was having the naturalistic style as we discussed. During 1906 to 1928, he had given six novels and he had got the honorary degrees from Cambridge University, Oxford University and several other universities. So, it shows that he was not only the man of literature, but he was the person who could be known as a man of intelligence, as a man of literate, the person who had been the icon uh, to show the other thinkers and other educators, other people, other social people of the society. So, that is why he had been getting the honorary degrees also from the universities. There are certain techniques in his writing that you must come across because when you are writing an answer regarding John Galsworthy's essay on art and censorship, first of all you are supposed to write the biographical details of Galsworthy, then you are supposed to write the works of Galsworthy, the famous works, the foresight saga or the drama, the silver box or the short story quality in that way you are supposed to write and then afterwards you need to write about his style of writing, his techniques of writing or the features and characteristics in his writing style. All these are same things which we are going to see over here. His smoothness and swiftness and overwhelming majority of the public and their opinions. Look. Three things are very much important in his writing, his smoothness, his swiftness and his overwhelming majority of the public and their opinions. It shows that he had been writing the essays or short stories or novels or drama, whatever he had been writing, his pen is about the general social public. He had touched the heart of the general social society and he had presented the genuine emotions of the society. That is why we can say that his writing could be under the category of realistic writing also, domestic writing as well as social writing as well as realistic social, domestic and interesting writing that is what is his style shows. His censorship of writing is very important as it is based on principles. Because he followed the principles and the rules and regulations of writing, it seems to be not at all fixed one, but it seems to be more interesting in the case of Glassworthy. His essay on art is about harmony, proportion and balance. Look, these are the three things that he had uh, written in his essay of art. He believed that harmony, proportion and balance must be observed while you are writing a work of art, while you are talking about art, while you are discussing about censorship. Proportion is necessary, harmony is important and in, in the same way the balance is necessary to present the better work of art. His vague thoughts on art are different. His thoughts on art are quite different from the thoughts of art of uh, Shakespeare or thoughts of art of George Bernard Shaw or thoughts regarding art of Aristotle or Plato. Basically, almost all the uh, creative writers, the persons of literature, they are having individual thinking on a particular field or on particular trajectory. Here, there is the case of Galsworthy where we have to see his personal individual views regarding art.
he observed the day of a rare beauty look it says that he begin his writing with the observation of the day and then he elaborated his ideas regarding censorship and the importance of the art and what art is actually in his as per his mindset he said look art is an imaginary expression of human energy which technical concretion of feeling and perception tends to reconcile the individual with universal you can see that he had mentioned the art as human energy and that human energy is scrutinized with individual thoughts and it represents to the universe so it is actually the outcome of human energy outcome of the human brain but giving or delivering or discussing about the universe so there are two things simultaneously he is mentioning over here that technical concretion of feeling and perception tends to reconcile the individual with universal means he wishes to say that the work of art is of course a matter of individual creation but that individual creation that creativity that creative work of art must be giving a uh, must be delivering an echo of the universe that's what he wants to say over here gaswati said the greatest art is that which arouses the emotion of pity and fear as there was previously the discussion by aristotle in his uh, unity uh, in his unity of time place and action in his great aristotle's poetics we knew that he discussed about the purgation and the theory of catharsis where he talked about the pity and fear and in the same way gaswati also following the ideas of aristotle in fact this is the idea of tolstoy even who said that the greatest art is that which arouses the emotion of pity and fear if you see or read the work of art and pity and fear arouses in your brain or in your heart or in your thinking in your emotions then the work of art is genuinely the quality work he further said the art is the matter of impersonal emotions and thus meant by it as it is the contemplation inspired by him with some active and impersonal emotions all these things are clumsy but i tell you in a very single word that he means to say that art should be impersonal art should be sub art should be without subjective element author should not be behind the work of art the work of art should stand as an individual single copy you couldn't judge that okay this kind of writing is this so it might be written by shakespeare or it might be written by kits or shelley it shows that the subjective element is found but here it is contradictory in the case of galsworthy he said that work of art should stand as if it is an important impersonal emotion it is the matter of impersonal emotion he means to say that look he had linked and stolen away out of himself means he said that the real art is all of from subjective element that's what i am telling you that subjective element should not be found easily from that work of art if you read if you are reading the books of charles dickens and you come to know that okay uh, the author's name is not written but i can say that it is the book of charles dickens then naturally you are finding the subjective element but even if you are reading the whole novel and you are not supposed to give the name to the work of art that is what is he tries to put emphasis over here galsworthy says that he emphasizes that hiding concealing the subjective element is a very big thing his idea is as similar as leo tolstoy as i told you and even aristotle who said about the real art is that that which touches the human beings emotions pity and fear basically and he means that art is the only aesthetic element that arouses the emotions of unconscious vibrations and impersonal element so if for example when you are reading the drama of shakespeare and uh, you read the famous work 
Hamlet or that famous work The Merchant of Venice or Othello and even you are not having any chance to arouse your pity and fear or even you are not afraid of what would happen next in the case of Othello, whether he would kill Desdemona or he would debauch Desdemona or whether Hamlet would kill his fa uh, uncle or what would happen next. Then and then only it shows that the work of art touches the impersonal element, the work of art arouses the emotions of unconscious vibrations, unconscious vibrations, you are not at all even conscious, but still you believe that, that you feel that, oh it may happen, oh may, the murder is done in that way. So, basically unconscious vibrations and impersonal element could be named under the word tragic flow, that tragic flow which Aristotle had delivered in his poetics could be named over here and it is represented as the art is the only aesthetic element that arouses, uh, arouses the emotions of unconscious vibration, unconscious vibration in the sense the tragic flow or that pity and fear, catharsis, purgation when the person reads or watches the work of art. He said that art is perpetually ambiguous and sometimes awkward extraneous floridities look. It may happen that when you are working, uh, reading the novel or when you are watching the movie or when you are watching the short story or when you are looking, uh, watching the drama, it may happen that you are not convinced with that particular work of art. It seems to be awkward and sometimes it happens that, that it uh, feels like extraneous floridities. It talks about hyperboles or it shows the extreme things which could not be convincing by the ordinary human being. But that is what is he said that it is the perpetual ambiguity through which you can mention that this is the work of art and this is the reality. So, art may contain extraneous floridities, art must have that ambiguous and sometimes awkward things which could be named that yes, this is the work of art. That is what he says. These are his personal um, views. Uh, of course, it may happen that you are not, uh, you do not agree with these personal views, but these are Galsworthy's personal views. So, basically we have to study it and adapt it in our, in our answers. He says, look, art had lyrics and lyricism and because of this lyrics and lyricism, there is a generation of rhythm. The rhythm is generated due to lyrics and lyricism. That is what he says, both that could be called rhythm. Then he gives some views about art, that art is the mysterious, mysterious harmony which is inseparable, balanced and surprising. It happens that it is inseparable as for example, there are five works of Shakespeare, generally I give you the example of Shakespeare, Hamlet, Macbeth and Merchant of Venice, Othello and Coriolanus or any other or the tempest, but you find that almost all the five tragedies though they are discussing about murders and death and suicide, almost all the five tragedies are different and that is what is the beauty of art that each work of art is different from the another work of art. Though the authors or the dramatists or the novelists are similar one particular novelist, he is writing two novels, still simultaneously it happens both these novels are quite different. So, inseparability, balancing and surprising thing, these are the three main features which are found in most of the art work of art. Art as human energy as it is told previously in the other uh, previous slide that art deals with human energy and whole world works as united one with the continual unconscious additional relaxation. So, here he means to th say that art plays the role of relaxation, art is a human energy, it gives you different energy, it gives you relaxation when you read the novel, it gives you pleasure and calm and composed atmosphere when you are watching the movie, when you are watching the serials, television serials or when you are reading the drama. 
so basically art is the safety valve when you are when human being is genuinely stressed or stressful while reading the poetry or while singing the poetry while singing the songs while listening to the songs while listening to the musical dramas while watching the movies the classic works or while reading the classic novels human being is relaxed that's that is why here it is said art is the biggest relaxation from life's itching and pinching problems art plays the role of safety valve and artist must contain full stop leisure movements facts and news all these are the compulsions these are the compulsory features compulsory characteristics which the artist must require when he or she is going to create the interesting work of art that is what galsworthy believes his essay on art is also about the censorship look as i told you he discussed about the art in the same way simultaneously he is talking about the censorship issue also and it is also about the artist and the ideologies regarding the art as the field or discipline he discussed uh, the censorship and art is taken in his uh, essay as the uh, discipline as one trajectory he meant to say that art had lyrics and lyricism and that's why art generates rhythm art as a human energy that also we had discussed and he said that this human energy which is united with the whole world it should be universal in the sense he said that he did not criticize but he adored the art as the rarest of rare beauty so basically art stands for the peace education art stands for the global world art stands for the concept of vasudev kutumbakam when art is taken as the universal world literature when art is suggested or studied under the universal world literature because world literature itself is universal it is about the universe and it is about the global people that's why all these three things are echoing the similar sound that art should be about the art is about the human energy and it should be similarly giving answer to the whole world these are the photographs of galsworthy the complete essays of galsworthy that you can find from the google as well as uh, flipkart and even amazon everywhere the books are available then the main book which under which we had studied this essay on art it is from the studies and essays censorship and art by john galsworthy where you will find the original work of his write up here there is a quotation which is very much important look the biggest tragedy of life is the utter impossibility to change what you have done this is the actual answer to his essay he believed that when there is change the change becomes an impossible change is a an impossible segment in the life of a human being that is what he means to say over here change is a continuous and constant impossible segment in the human being's life so this is actually the conclusion part of the whole essay of censorship and art about john galsworthy basically two two things are very much important over here that which you have to understand first one is about art he presents his exciting opinions on art his own personal individual thoughts his own personal individual ideologies are reflected in his essay on art and another thing that is about the questions the censorship of plays the censorship of writing where he anticipated parallel censorship of literature art politics religion and more he talked about the censorship in general regarding literature art politics and 
religion even so basically two things one about art and another about censorship that which we had already discussed in this whole session until now thank you very much god bless you all wish you very good luck Yeah, yeah, but.